our mind is our biggest obstacle. We talk about that and much more on this episode of The Crude Truth. In 1901, at Spindletop Hill near Beaumont, the future of Texas changed dramatically as, like a fountain of fortune, thousands of barrels of oil burst from the earth towards the sky. Soon, Detroit would be cranking out Model Ts by the millions, and America was on the move, thanks to the black gold being produced in Texas. Now, more than a century later, the vehicles are different, but nothing else has truly changed. Sure, there may be many other alternative energy sources like wind and solar and electric. But let's be honest, America depends on oil and entrepreneurs, and if the USA is truly gonna be independent, it has to know the crude truth. This episode is brought to you by LFS Chemistry. We are committed to being good stewards of the environment. We are providing the tools so you can be too. NAEP Expo, where deals happen. Air Compressor Solutions. When everything is on the line, Air Compressor Solutions is the dependable choice to keep commercial business powered up. Sandstone Group. Exec Crew. Elevate your network, elevate your knowledge. Texas Star Alliance, Pecos Country Operating, fueling our future. Well, hello again, and thank you as always for tuning in to another episode of The Crude Truth. We're down here at our Austin studio again for what's going to be just an amazing episode today. I can already feel it. Uh, Pre-production uh, discussions have just been off the chart. Um, as you can hear from my teaser, we're, we're going to talk about our minds today and how you may have negative naysayers out there and, and people that may be rooting against you, but if you don't have your mind right, as my father likes to say, uh, you ain't doing nothing. So I'm just so, so excited today because well, we just have on somebody that's just so great, but also on today, I've brought once back on a great co-host, uh, life coach and motivational speaker, keynote speaker, Christy Kearns. Christy, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you? Oh my goodness. I can't complain. How's Austin treating you so far? I love it here. It's nice, right? It's beautiful. Yes. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you so much. What have you been up to? Well, I don't know. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> how long do we have? <laughs> a lot. You've been busy. I have been busy. Yes. I'm traveling a lot. Yes. Doing a lot of things. It's been amazing. Well, good. Good. I'm so glad. Uh, and, and thank you for coming on again, because uh, our guest today is somebody that is a best-selling author, uh, somebody that's book has really skyrocketed in the last three months, I think. And uh, our guest, is, she's actually even been so vulnerable in this book. Uh, the name of the book is, I'm going to do this, Unfuck Your Mind. Our guest today is Jana Johnson. Jana, how are you? I'm doing great, Ray. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, it's just so awesome. And your book is freaking amazing. I I've told gentlemen about it all over the place. Like, you have to read this book uh, because of, of kind of what we talked about in our preview. It's like your mind, if you don't have your mind right, you can't get anything done. But that's literally just the tip of the iceberg of your book, Unfuck Your Mind, which I love it. I mean, I'm going to have to click the button that says, no, this episode is not for kids. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, the, the title of the book came actually quite easy for me because um, I've always been told I cuss like a sailor, but just because that that's what it is, right? We just get in our own way. Yeah. And it's so easy to point the finger, to point the finger at what happened and who, and if this, and if that, but honestly, we just got to point the finger into the mirror and and unf ourselves. Yeah. Well, one time I remember uh, Chrissy said a long time ago, it's like, if you have somebody pointing one finger at you, there's literally four pointing back at you. That's absolutely true. Yeah. And it really kind of was opened up my eyes in a lot of ways when you see people and they do point the finger at you. It's like, you got something wrong with you too. If I got something wrong. Absolutely. That's, and you know, I, I, I noticed as I healed and I went through this process, right, of, of unfucking my mind and shattering my limiting beliefs, that my circle around me changed. Yes. My environment changed. Um, and as that happened, I realized that my, the healing that I was doing inside was shining a light on other people's insecurities. And, and I'm, I'm speaking about people who were, you know, who were, I was very close. I was like, I'll, be ride or dies until you know 90 yeah. and um 
the people you least expect it from. But there's there's something to be said about others sharing in each other's misery, so to speak. And when someone heals, the people around you, you either got to level up or they just fall off. Yeah, I like to say that your your light is shining so bright that the darkness can't come with you. One of your people have the darkness and they cannot come with you. You got to go. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, um, your book, again, like I said, you know, I tell everybody it's about you know, clearing your mind, getting over the obstacle. But like I mentioned a second ago, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, when I, when I uh, uh, was looking at and trying to get you on the show and Chris, he's like, oh my gosh, this lady's story resonates with so many people. Uh, and Chrissy was one of them. Right? Yeah, myself. Obviously, um, you have Lyme disease. I have Lyme disease. It's um, a subject that's not talked about at all. Yep. And so many people don't understand there's different strands. And actually, you know, I like to say I had Lyme disease, even though it stays dormant. And so if you could just tap in a little bit about, um, we both did the holistic approach, but yep. what made you strive for that and what happened? Well, that is because co conventional medicine failed me. You know, I was one of the few 30% of people that get Lyme disease actually had the bullseye rash. You did. Yeah. But I was unaware. I, I didn't even know what Lyme disease was. This was back in April of 2012. And so, you know, I've always kind of been a country girl. And so I see this rash and I'm just like, it doesn't itch. It doesn't hurt. I felt fine at the time. So I ignored it. And then just fast forward about six months and my life, my symptoms started to creep in and my life starts to change and, and I can no longer function. And, and I, my two, I have three kids. My two oldest at the time were, were one and three. And, you know, it's easy to chalk it up to just being a, a mom of young kids, right? So to answer your question, I, I start to feel really, really bad. And the neurological symptoms are quite severe. And so I do what most people do. You go to the doctor. And at that point, 2012, you didn't really hear about functional medicine. Not like today. I mean, I didn't even know what it was. And so I went to about 14 doctors in about, about a 10, 10, 12 month span. And was told it was, your, it was my thyroid and hormones and all this other stuff. But I still knew deep down inside, but, but, but why? Because I was fine. I've never had any health issues and 31 years old. And I, you know, there's, there's gotta be some reason that this, my body's turned against me. And so after conventional medicine literally felled me and so did the testing for, for Lyme disease, conventional test, um, that's when, that's when in all my studying, I found functional medicine and it resonated with me because it doesn't look for a Band-Aid. It looks to find the root cause of why you're sick. And functional medicine is what finally diagnosed me with Lyme disease amongst a whole array of things. And, um, you know, that it resonated with me and the holistic approach just made sense. And conventional, I mean, functional medicine is not actually what put me on the path to the essential oils and, and what I did to get well. Um, but, but, but the doctor supported me in it. That decision that you made. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. And also the functional medicine obviously help you tap into unfucking your mind. So it was an internal. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say instead of functional medicine, I would say it was more about Lyme disease did. Okay. Lyme disease was the first catalyst. And I've put this in the book. I even put first catalyst. Lyme disease was the first catalyst that got me to realize, hey, when I was so sick with Lyme disease and I decided to believe I could get well and I could heal, I believe Lyme can be eradicated from your body. I believe if you want to, if you want to believe it lies dormant, then it does. I believe it can be eradicated on your body. And the, the day that I almost took my own life because the symptoms were so bad, I just was like, I, I can't live like this anymore. I can't think this way anymore. It's not working. I didn't realize it at the time, but as I got well and I looked back a few years later, I realized when I changed the way I thought, my actions followed. That was the first catalyst to me. And then ended up being about nine, eight years later that I had the second and final catalyst, which was an ultimate heartbreak in, in my in in a marriage. And that earth shattering heartbreak is ultimately what put me on the path to unfucking my mind. Powerful. And then, you know, you, you talk about that I believe, 
And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what you're saying. You know, I, I believe this. I, I, I'm not going to do this. You know, reminds me of the old joke that I always hear about the older lady that, uh, uh, you know, that got Parkinson's disease. And, you know, the, the, the doctor comes in and tells her, hey, man, you got Parkinson's. The lady goes, well, I don't have that. I have too many things to do. I don't know what that is. And by quite frankly, I just don't have it. And it's that mental. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is really, uh, okay, I don't have, uh, well, I haven't had the Lyme disease before, uh, but your book really resonated with me just because of the fact of, of your mind. And, and, and you journal, you know, people talk about journaling and I'm trying to become better at that. And I look at your book as this is a part of your journal that you did and you've You've opened it up, and I love how you, you know, in our pre-production, uh, and you're like, "I'm an open book," and I'm like, "Yeah, you, you literally are an open book," and I think your story has resonated for so many people. I mean, how does that? I mean, you know, how does that feel? It feels, it feels really um, overwhelming in a good way. And when I say overwhelming, people think of that in a negative context, but it's not. It's I wrote that book from the person that is where I went. I wrote the book that is for the girl or the, or the, or the, or the boy who was as sick as I was, or, you know, the book is Lyme disease. The book was originally going to be about Lyme disease and that's it. And then this is what came out, right? It's like the book was always there inside of me, but I had to uncover it, so to speak. And you uncover it by choosing to go through the healing process. I believe in our lives. We have two different paths every single day. You have two paths you can take. Now, do we all have a final destination in our last day? Yes. I don't believe we can avoid that. But I do believe we have two different paths every day, every day, which is the victim mindset and the victor mindset. So I can choose if I want to overcome something. I didn't get well from Lyme disease because that was my path. I chose that path. Yeah. And I carved that damn path out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I carved that path out by choosing to overcome it, by saying no to the doctors by saying no to what my fate was and by saying, you know what? Fuck that. I choose different. And because I chose different, I did different. If today I got a diagnosis and I just said, well, that's what it is and that's what I have. That's my life now. I just said, thank you. I accepted it and just put it right here in my lap. Instead, I'm just like, absolutely not. Yeah. I believe different. And people don't realize that we have all these thoughts that go through our head every single day and we just believe what that that's it. That's the truth. And it's like, but you know what? Maybe it's a negative tape playing in your head. It is. And but so why do you have that negative tape? Right? Right. It all stems from limiting beliefs. What's a limiting belief? Those are formed in childhood. Every single human is a product of their environment. And that's not a bad thing. We are all a product of the environment we grew up in. But we all have these limiting beliefs and we don't realize where I lived my life for almost 40 years um, off of limiting beliefs. And it, it, the moment of realizing like I, I have invisible chains holding me back, right? And you put yourself in a safety box. I talk about this in the book, right? Your safety box. You got your walls, you got your floor, you got your ceiling. Well, you can't spread your wings and you can't go above that ceiling. You should always have a floor because those are your boundaries. Yeah. Ground it. Break the fucking walls down. Break the damn roof off. Spread your wings and fly. You cannot do that with invisible chains holding you back. If there's anything that you could tell somebody, obviously with the chains that you um, you felt that withheld yourself, mm -hmm. but also it's embedded from us, our childhood. But how do you like, if you want to change that mindset and, and grow and spread your wings, what advice would you give somebody that can actually you know, tap into that or learn or any things like things that you do in the morning? Do you speak, you know, in the affirmations? Do you do mirror work? Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it, it, I think that, I think everybody wants to have an easy way, like, oh, I journal and I do all this. Honestly, it's about what kind of life do you want to live and who are you living your life for? That's as plain and simple. You got to do the work. It is not a specific exercise. It is about deciding what life do you want to live and who the fuck do you want to live it for? Because you only get one the last time I checked. And so the, the very first step is to, to find your limiting beliefs, trace them all the way back to the root, and then you got to pull that root up. And you do that by shattering your limiting beliefs. And as you do that, 
and you work on you work on your environment, the people that you surround yourself with, you you realize that you you are the creator of your life. But in order to do that, you got to do the work and you got to heal your mindset. So, you know, if you're going through the process, what I teach people is as every thought enters your mind, decide if you want to let it stay or not, right? You got to rip all the negative labels off. So every negative label that you were given by your ex, your parents, by whoever, you know, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. It's time to rip the labels off and need to replace those labels. You are good enough. You are pretty enough. You have everything it fucking takes, but you got to believe it. I like to say that it's okay to, you know, embody those feelings 15 minutes. Give yourself 15 minutes, put a timer on, and that's all you are allowed to mm -hmm. embrace them because feelings are feelings. We have to understand where they're coming from. And then 15 minutes, let's get this done with and let's pivot. It's time to put that box over here and let's pivot. So pivot is like a good way, I guess, or a formula. How would you say that somebody could pivot? Do you have them say, no, I am worthy or I am valuable or I am loved or just, you know, I know gratitude, you know, 15 minutes of gratification changes your whole, you can't be negative and positive at the same time. And positive all, always overpowers the negative if you focus on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to what you just said, always allow yourself, what I always tell people, look, allow yourself time to feel. You have to feel and deal in order to heal, okay? If something hurts you, if something's making you sad, feel it. Because if not, it's just going to fester and it's going to harden and it's going to turn into a poison into your life. And to what you said, yes, replace all of it. Replace the negative. Remind yourself of what you are. And as you do that, to what Christy said, you work on replacing everything. You slowly give yourself a new tape. But you got, you got to get rid of the old tape in your head. And the other thing that I think is really important, and I do teach this in the book, is I talk about the door method in the book. Right, You have your closed door, your open door, and your screen door. And everyone gets a door. Okay, So you have your best friends, the people closest to you. Family is not a free pass, by the way, so that's why I didn't include that. You have your open door. Those, that's your best friend, partner, whoever. Then you have your screen door. Right, Those are the people who they get to see into your life, but at, a, at, a, at an arm's length. Then you got the closed door with the padlock and the deadbolt, right? Mm -hmm. Not everyone gets a free gets free access to you. You have to protect yourself. You have to protect your energy. And I think another really important thing is boundaries. You cannot go through this healing process and become who you're meant to be if you do not put boundaries in there for you. Boundaries are like your gatekeeper, right? It's like putting the fence around your yard because if you have the weeds in, you can't have the green grass and beautiful flowers. So you got to have boundaries that keep all the crap out so the good stuff can grow. Yeah, I, th I like to use the terminology when uh, obviously putting up a boundary, it's no thank you. And that really puts that wall up as no thank you. you. Your energy, you're not allowed to come in here. And you don't have to say it out loud. It's just in your mind, no thank you. And there you are, your wall's up. And it dismisses that from receive you, you're receiving that energy. Yep, I love that. And you know what? It's really, really telling when you have boundaries, all of a sudden you got people that get a little fussy, right? Yes. Well, you know what? The ones who really don't respect you and are really not your true person, they're not going to like your boundaries. And honestly, don't let the door hit you on that. Yeah, exactly. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Audio. Bye. Holding. Bye. <laughs> okay. Or as a Southern girl say it, bless your heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, reminds me of last night. Take it. I was <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. We'll cut that out. <laughs> sure. And somebody that so I was like, "Would you like some taters tonight?" And I was like, "No, not like taters." And I said, "You just tricked me into doing that." <laughs> she said taters. I did. I said taters. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. blew my mind. Uh, but I'm glad how you brought up limiting uh, uh, art and the beliefs uh, because you uh, that's early in your book, and um, I thought about that, and I've got a two year old, and I just remember growing up that you know. We got to jump ranch going up, like, oh, see how high. And my father would sit there and watch us and go for it. You got this. How nerve wracking that must have been for him to watch us, you know, jump things higher than the table and hope we don't fall. <laughs> yeah. But yet he was there not limiting what we can do. Or over the weekend, um, my son, um, uh, there's a muddy path by in the back of the yard. And he just looked at me like, and I was like, 
go do it. It's like, you know, go go have that. You know, don't don't want to just uh and inside you're terrified. Oh, I I'm <laughs> those things. You know, I'm like, oh it's gonna be a mess. Uh, but that's yeah. like with life. You have to let people you have to fall. We have to fall ourselves. Yes. Fall and get it back up and you come back stronger and more powerful. Or you can, oh no, I fell. And like you said, the victim and that's just where I mean you're training your son beautifully. Like go. You're gonna fall and it's okay. We're not gonna embrace that. Oh poor baby. No. It's okay. Let's get up. Let's do it again, and you'll be even stronger then. And that is so powerful. Yes, it it, it truly is. Because I mean, you know, I mean, rub, rub, rub it off. It's okay. <laughs> so you take it off. Take yeah. it off. Yeah. It's good, you know. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on because it really stuck out to me uh, at the very beginning because there's this it just almost like a section that says fake confidence. And that's my I, favorite. <laughs> I was like, oh crap! I I was like, and so as soon as I saw that, I was like. So let's talk about fake confidence. Fake it. You make it, Yeah. <laughs> so fake confidence, um, that was just kind of something I, I, I'm I'm known for having all my little sayings, right? And I have my takeaways in the book in the beginning yeah. and the end. And fake confidence when I was writing, um, it came to me is the best way to describe it. And we, every single person has, has had it or has it. Um, no one is free from it. Fake confidence is truly when you don't have true confidence the thing is is that people don't know they don't have true confidence fake confidence is when you're confident in an ability that you have and in a talent right in your looks but you're lacking the true confidence with who you are as a person and you cannot have true confidence if you don't love yourself approve of yourself and accept yourself yeah. and that kind of leads me into saying that until you approve of yourself, love yourself, and accept yourself, no one else will, and you'll look for it in all the wrong places. And I think that is right there. The it, what I got out of your book is until you do that for yourself, mm -hmm. nothing else, man. It doesn't matter what all the negative people. But until you can believe in yourself, you're never gonna do. That. It's like the mirror. You're reflecting the the person that you attract is the same. It mirror you're mirroring each other yeah you're mirroring the triggers that you need to work on for each other and until oh you realize that that oh i need to work on this or that then we're going to constantly point the finger or whatever and that's like it's a gift you attract what you are to to impel yourself better yes amen to that and you know there was something really profound um you know writing a book people think it's just something you just sit and you write a book um there's there's no way to really describe what it's like to get in this creative headspace because it take it takes a lot. It, took, it, it takes a lot of energy. And I wrote something and I just fell to pieces because it's not like, oh, I know what I'm going to write. I'm just, I'm writing, it's flowing. And I'm talking about a, a past relationship and how, you know, until I found love within myself and for myself, I looked for it in the wrong places. And I'm writing and I write, okay, um, they say love is blind. And then it hit me and this was so profound when I wrote it and I realized this, it, love isn't blind. It's a lack of love for ourselves that makes us blind. When you don't fully love yourself, you're blind to everyone else's bullshit. I like to say, which goggles am, am I putting on today? Yeah, because it, it, they're like, oh, love is blind. You didn't see all those red flags. No, it's because you didn't love yourself. And if you loved yourself, you never even would have talk to that person yeah, your values will be up where they're supposed to be 100 when you yeah. inhibit from them and let that yeah. come into your life yes mm -hmm. and that goes back to the boundaries mm -hmm. right part of loving yourself because i i didn't i could not love myself i hated everything about myself i hated the way i looked and all these things but that's because i accepted those negative labels and it was really really hard to look in the mirror and just be like you're beautiful i love you it was hard and it shouldn't be that hard to look at yourself and say that it yeah. really shouldn't be. But, you know, part of loving yourself is is creating boundaries. And boundaries doesn't mean you're stuck up or you think you're better than. It just means you've got boundaries and you have values. And if you don't fit, then you're not allowed yeah. in. Sorry. Yeah. You're just, yeah, sorry. You're yeah. fine. But you got your pretty little fits and you got your little pretty door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it can swing that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, Jenna, you know, for those out there that are, are looking for some guidance and some and some help, you know, how you know, are, are you? Uh, you are a coach as well, and, and uh, you know, how can people reach out to you and, and go from there? Yeah, um, I do have a few spots left for one on one. Um, I don't have many, 
Um, but I do work with people one-on-one on mindset and nutrition, uh, both. And you can find me at my website, revivedbyjana.com. Um, I also have a podcast, Revive with Jana. And I, I talk about mindset, Lyme disease, relationships, um, a little bit of a little bit of everything. And then Instagram, I'm really big there, Revive by Jana. And then, of course, my book. Yes, your book. Yeah. I'll let you show them. Yes, my book. And you know what? Um, this is going to be recorded very, very soon. So um, audio book is going to be coming out. And then I have the ebook and then, of course, the, the hard copy. So, yeah. Well, Jenna, I again, I cannot thank you enough for coming on today, uh, uh, for being here in, in, in Austin. Uh, Chrissy, thank you so much for, for asking some great questions. Uh, like I said to you beforehand, it's like I, you know, I, I enjoyed the book, but I, I see it from a totally guy standpoint. So I'm very, very thankful that you're able to do that and, and share and, and, and bring more to it. Uh, ladies, thank y'all both so much. Um, and uh, really, if for those out there that, want to read a book guys gentlemen this is a great book like i said limiting your beliefs we all are do that and we got to stop that we can all be better men better ladies every day and i know i have to be better also uh, so thank you as always and we'll see you again on another episode of the crude truth again the crude truth would like to thank today's sponsors lfs chemistry nape expo air compressor solutions sandstone group Exec Crew, Texas Star Alliance, Pecos Country Operating, and Real News Communication Network. The easiest way to start your own podcast and TV show? Real News Communications Network. Stand out from your competition. Produce streams of high-quality social media content. Become a thought leader in your industry. With RNCN, you get to be the host. We handle everything else. Tour one of our three locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and The Colony. Call 972-402-6333 or visit launchashow.com to find out more.